Hello, my fellow degenerates. Today we're going to be, fuck. Today we're going to be talking about someone who currently has a bigger following than I do. He has more spirits to fuel his dark magics. However, I'm very excited for the day that that will no longer be the case. It'll be one small joy in my life amongst a thousand others. Wizards, we all know them. You got the cool ass robes and hats and staffs, cool asses, all wizards have those, long hair and wild eyes, and of course, magic. You might not have noticed because I hide it very well, but I am a huge nerd. When I was a kid, I got obsessed with the Lord of the Rings and Dungeons and Dragons and Star Wars, and I started creating my own fantasy worlds to get lost in. I wrote short stories, made original characters, and dreamed of one day becoming a magic user myself. You might notice that I'm in new clothes. The power went out while I was filming, so let's continue. <laughs> the key phrase in what I just said a second ago is when I was a kid, right? Do I still love all those things? Absolutely. Do I still think I could be a wizard in real life? No, no I do not. But the person we're going to be talking about today does. There's also a couple other notable things about him that we'll get to in due time. If you're completely unaware of who Varg is, then the world is finally healing. And I am here to spread pestilence upon the face of the earth once again. This dude is a metal musician turned murderer, turned Nazi, turned racist calling himself a wizard, turned cringy TikToker. Not a great look on any accounts, really. I mean, come on, a metal musician? <laughs> Back in the 90s, Varg became probably the most influential figure in the Norwegian black metal scene, making a handful of records under the name Burzum, or as he pronounces it, Burzum. His life is a tragic and fairly fascinating study of a person descending into madness, and then coming out of it a rather small, bitter, bigoted human. But what happened that led to this madness I speak of? Well, Christian, if you can imagine this, his name was actually originally Christian, which is ironic because he hated Christians. As recent as 2011, Varg was associated with a terrorist who killed 77 people during a bombing in central Oslo. But he later denounced said terrorist using some very flowery language. In case you can't tell yet, this video actually has very little to do with wizards and this rabbit hole is fucking insane. So thank you for joining me on this journey and I did not expect for this to turn into this, so sorry. <laughs> per his own website, he accuses the terrorist of being a Zionist agent and a Christian loser. He then goes on to say, if you work for Christianity in any way, you work for the Jews. Which should give you a general idea of the type of person that we're dealing with here. But I digress. Apart from being named Christian and hating Christians, Varg had a lot going for him in the 90s and has been referred to as as the most notorious metal musician of all time. On the 6th of June, 1992, the Fantov Stave Church was burned to the ground by arson. The cover of Burzum's EP, Ashes, is a photograph of the destroyed church. By January 1993, arson attacks had occurred on at least seven other major stave churches. Varg would have been around 19 at the time, and was later found guilty of many of these burnings. Himself. He, he committed them which is just so fucking crazy to me. Imagine going to a normal gathering place for teenagers in the 90s. I don't know, an arcade or, or a shopping mall or the movies or the village square because the 19th century is ancient history and the other kids are all, hey guys, what'd you do this weekend? I got to first base with a girl. She let me kiss her. Well, I smoked weed and jerked off all day. <laughs> That's pretty cool, guys, but uh, I burned down some churches and hung a swastika in my bedroom. What? Dude, what the fuck? How embarrassing and awkward would that be, right? But this guy wasn't done. I mean, if he had burned churches, what's stopping him from going up from there? Varg had his own band, but was also a longtime collaborator with another prominent guitarist in the same metal scene who went by the stage name Euronymous. Eventually, Varg and Euronymous would have a falling out, and Varg would kill him with a knife, stabbing him a total of 23 times. Two in the head, five in the neck, and 16 in the back. 
Don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. Takes stabbing your friend in the back to a whole new level, doesn't it? <laughs> Too soon. Get it, because this happened 30 years ago? Varg later claimed that this attack was in self-defense, but authorities didn't see it that way. And he spent 15 years of a 21-year sentence in prison for first-degree murder, arson, and possession of explosives until he was released in 2009. You might be asking yourself, what did he do during his time in prison? Well, Varg fell further and further and further down into neo-Nazi ideology, made some more music, and generally spent his time being a fucking bonehead. Now, if I was any sort of rational person, after learning all this, you know, like I was originally gonna make a video about a TikTok person, but after learning all of this, I would have just let it be. I mean, what are the odds that I, Daniel Profeta, could in some sick, twisted, sadistic way, find something funny about all of this. I mean, this is a real life wizard that I'm dealing with. Plus, if I had any standards at all, I would be going further into the history of what made this strange man the person that he is today. I would be reporting facts in a somber video essay format. However, and you must understand, he made a TikTok account. This supposedly terrifying man who calls for extremist racial violence on a daily basis has a fucking TikTok account where he posts little clips of himself like he's just some normal dude. So instead of talking about how obviously evil guy is obviously evil, we're going to learn to laugh at tragedy until our soul goes numb. Let's get started. Delightful. Has he never cleaned that guitar? That's the buzziest sounding electric guitar I've ever heard in my life. It sounds like if you shook a beehive and bees flew out, but instead of buzzing, they were asking if you've heard of eugenics. Is that not literally just smells like teen spirit? The most influential guy in this fake counterculture and the first riff he plays sounds like Nirvana. So since Burzum is a metal band, normally all of these songs sound extremely heavily distorted and heavy. Whereas here, as they're played acoustically, they sound like, just to pull a random example, um, if, if you were to try to like set fire to a church, but instead you just lit a cigarette in the rain with a match that fizzed out before you light it, leaving you sad damp, cigaretteless, and bitchless. Did you know that I am, along with my brother, the only Norwegian child ever to go to public Iraqi school under Saddam Hussein? Really? I had no idea. Seems like an odd thing to brag about, Varg. Your commenters certainly seem to think so. Varg, we need more storytelling videos on TikTok. Tell us the history of your life. The adventures of our childhood help shape who we become. Ah yes, the fun-filled adventures that he was discussing. Although, honestly, I guess this comment ended up being partially true. Because according to Wikipedia, Christian himself, did you forget his name was Christian? Because I sure didn't. Christian himself said that both of his parents were fairly openly racist. Plus there's the whole, you know, murdering someone that could do a number on someone's psyche. It is praiseworthy to do what is right, not what is lawful. So like, I don't know, killing someone? By the way, Varg, when you told me that you were really interested in gathering your own collection of Littlest Pet Shop toys, did you mean it? I mean, were you telling the truth? Would I lie to you, baby? Would I lie to you? I guess not. Honestly, despite not trusting him farther than I can toss him, I'm starting to understand part of what draws people to this guy. His demeanor is very disarming. He's just a silly little guy making fun little videos. And he often starts them with that dumbass, let's find out. He seems so normal and well-adjusted. And honestly, at this point, I'm starting to wonder if maybe I've found the wrong guy. Let's find out. Let's find out. Did you know that elf means white? Ah, there it is. Varg's particular brand of racism has nuance to it. At least that's what he'd like you to believe. Over the years, he's swung back and forth on actually calling himself a Nazi and yada, yada, yada. My point is, I think that having different brands and styles of racism is, is similar to if you had different brands of trash. A lot of his defenders online try to act like the exact distinctions make a difference when they absolutely do not. Here's some fantastic brain rot reading material, but to cut to the chase, 
What type of Nazi he is doesn't matter. Unlike his unfounded hatred, my hatred has foundation. He hates based off of appearances and trivial things to make himself feel more powerful. And I despise him based on his actions and ideology that he spews across the internet like some sludge or toxic waste. And then you have his following. Either people who support the music by saying that you should just separate art from the artist, completely disregarding that in many cases the artist's views are embedded deeply into the art that they create. His xenophobia is childish, and these types of childish views can spread like an intellectual cancer. You can't exactly just disregard them. And what's funny is more recently he's decided that he finds it offensive if people label him a Nazi. And in unrelated news, here's a bit of a blog post from 2012. For the first time in many decades, the Jews are unveiled as weak and powerless, and they lose more and more of their support in Europe. Every day, thousands of Europeans wake up and see the true white light. I wonder what he means there. And they see the true face of all of this racist garbage. But you know what really gets me? You know what really grinds my gears? I am a huge fan of the Lord of the Rings, the Hobbit, the Silmarillion, and most of the associated works regarding the fantastic mythical world of Middle Earth. And this fucking guy calls himself Gandalf the White on Twitter. Well then I am Saruman the Many Colored. Saruman the Gay. Also as an aside, he actually got banned from Twitter. I can't imagine why. Honestly, with some of the other stuff Twitter's been allowing recently, I'm surprised his account isn't back up yet, but I'm getting off track. I found a fantastic exchange in the YouTube comments of a post about Varg that perfectly encapsulates the behavior of Burzum fans. It's funny how people call Varg a poser, even though he is the least poser figure to come out of black metal. And he literally started some sort of movement slash rebellion in his time. The absolute Terra Chad. So that's all it takes to earn respect. Goddamn. So that's all it takes to earn respect? Just start a movement? I am hereby starting a religion. A movement, if you will. Killian Murphy is the real Oppenheimer and a time traveler who went back in time to build a bomb so that his friend Christopher Nolan wouldn't bomb at the box office. In Killian's name we pray. Varg believed what he was speaking about in the 90s. It wasn't a gimmick for him, and that separated him from most of those other guys. He didn't just talk about stuff. He was taking action also, and suffered the consequences for it. I can't believe what I'm reading. Again, it's this weird notion that just because you're doing something that's unpopular, that all by itself not only makes it noteworthy, but also worthy of respect. No, it wasn't a gimmick. He committed arson and murder and incites racial hatred. And of fucking courts, there were consequences. Am I going bananas? But it gets so much worse. A dissident, he left black metal for good. An iconoclast killed the prophet poser Euronymous. Oh my God. 51 likes on a video with less than 20,000 views. Now, after all of those other strange comments, we finally get to the heart of it. It's not because he's counterculture. That's not what makes him cool. These people want you to believe that that's why they love him, but here it gets all laid out. They agree with his racist dreck, and that's what keeps the myth alive. You want a wizard? Here's the spell. Someone then responds to that disgusting comment with a bit of shock. They ask, why so racist? I know that he got into this stuff after his imprisonment. They are woefully ignorant, but genuinely curious. So what is the response back? There's nothing wrong with wanting to preserve your own people. Obviously, resorting to this sense of otherism and fear of people who are different than you in no way other than skin color is inherently, deeply racist. And you, my intelligent viewer, must understand that to even imply otherwise is a cop-out. Like, if you're going to hold these views at all, at, at least acknowledge them, right? Oh, but, but another fantastic little response here. Not a racist or anything, personally, but there is no objective right or wrong. So you can't really say that racism is good or bad, it's merely your opinion. I'm making this video because I find a lot of this stuff, on some level, kind of hilarious, but also 
it's so infuriating to me. I understand that these are just random comments under a YouTube video, but the sentiment seen here can be seen carried over into every single comment section dealing with this man, probably including the one under this video. He has fans who adore him and subscribe to everything he tells them through his music, interviews, blog posts, and TikToks. And as much as I'd prefer that these types of views weren't held any longer, they are. And these people have many excuses as to why they resorted to these positions in their everyday thinking. But ultimately, it's up to you, and by extension me, to call it out as the cancer that it is, and then do something to try to undo that damage. Very often, young, impressionable people are groomed into this type of thinking through their elders, from forums online, from bad friends. It might even start out as a joke, and then over time you start to realize that, hey, this isn't really a joke anymore. All I can do is hope that these people eventually change and grow. And despite all of the doom and gloom, I have a pretty good idea that the vast majority of them can come back to the glorious light of being a decent human being. Now, to lighten the mood, I have prepared a slideshow of screenshots of comments underneath Varg's recent TikTok posts that really made my day a little brighter. Is he playing Smells Like Teen Spirit? This sounds like falling in reverse. This is a certified hood classic. Varg, can you do a Fortnite Let's Play? Varg. Do you fuck with skibbity toilet? <laughs> Varg, what was your longest mewing session? Do you love pegging? Does Varg goon or chill? <laughs> uh, I don't I don't think we could top that one. Varg, how big was Euronymous got? Jesus Christ, that is diabolical. Holy shit. I love the internet so much sometimes. That's his relatively new TikTok page. As I'm recording this, he posted a video just yesterday, and it's all pretty silly until it turns into elves or cultural appropriation. Hey, dumbass. Elves aren't real, just like birds. This video, like most of his TikToks, actually turns into an advertisement by the end, which is rather odd, because if you look at his video descriptions, you'll find this amusing sentence. Trying to save our heritage is my objective, not to make money by pretending to do so. Huh, interesting. So in this one, he's trying to sell you his role-playing game, Dungeons and Dragons, but with even more racism. In this one, he's promoting one of his books. In this one, he's promoting a different one of his books. In this one, he's promoting his new music. I mean, his website even asks for donations. But that's the nature of all this. It's attention-seeking and preying on susceptible people to try to sell them an ideology. And what's interesting is that TikTok is just the tip of the iceberg. He had a humble YouTube channel where he actively promoted Nazi ideology, and YouTube left it up for six years and allowed it to garner 250,000 subscribers in that time period before finally deleting it for hate speech. A quarter of a million people actively subscribed to the worldviews of an outspoken neo-Nazi. Can you believe that? Since I had to listen to this dork, now you do too, uh, because I actually found re-uploads of all of his old YouTube content on BitChute. Because of course they're allowed there. It's fucking bit shoot. I could only stomach a few of them. We're going to go over some highlights that I found that should interest anyone who's still watching this video. This video, titled The Purpose of Civilization, is about how most people need to die. Since Christian definitely understands how civil people act in normal society, I think he's perfectly qualified to talk about this. It's like if Jeffrey Dahmer was teaching you how to be polite. His points are so strangely put together but in every video he's calm and acts like he's bestowing sage knowledge to you. Where I will come to you when you least expect it, with the wise words of a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is a wizard. He just couldn't quite figure out how to light his videos without making his face look like a black hole. Oh, what's this one about? Getting a good traditional wife is not a human right. Huh. Real heroes, they fight dragons in real life. They don't sit in front of a computer screen and do it in some virtual reality. <laughs> <laughs> yes, guys. What you need to do is simply go out into the woods and find a lizard to kill. Real heroes fight dragons. Oh, okay. I understand now. The snake was just for reference. It is my vice that I need to conquer. 
This video is about how women are trash, but so are men, and trash men attract trash women. So in order to get that traditional European blonde with blue eyes, you must first better yourself. I'd play you the rest of this video, but I think that you'd get around the same value as if I were to record myself taking a shit and just play that. Uh, you might even get more value out of it if you're into that sort of thing. Link to my OnlyFans down below in the description. This video is titled The Dream for All Sane Native European Men, but I'm a peeing on that title. That was so stupid. It doesn't seem quite accurate to me. So let's fix it up a bit so it more accurately reflects the content within. Also, if you check the description, he mentions that he had to re-edit the video because he originally posted naked children playing in the mud. Children I'm 99% sure are his. And what's even grosser is that he fucking left that original version up on BitChute, which even for that platform seems like it's kind of pushing the boundaries of what should be legal to post on the internet. Everything is just getting weirder and weirder. And as you go further, it gets worse. You know how you could dive into the ocean and sink down and the lower you go, the weirder the shit is that you start to see. It gets darker and, and bigger and stranger. And this is just like that if the fish were racist. This video, he talks about having kids with people who aren't white and why that's bad. This video is about how women shouldn't go to school or fill their heads with knowledge. <clears throat> I'm sorry, brainwashing lies. Sorry, ladies, you know learn or do thing. You can only cook clean, have baby. He then implies 30 year old women are uh, too old to be useful. And by useful, he means fertile for him. And I wanna move on, but later in this video, he addresses the women that he imagines are laughing at him, like a small demographic of women who disagree with him. And dude, it's not just women. The only reason I'm watching this is because I think it's hilarious that a murderer Nazi who spent decades of his life cultivating this persona of being some sort of hardened badass who speaks the truth, is out here making dorky TikToks. Any rational person that sees this bullshit will either laugh or feel a bit bad out of pity that any one person could harbor so much hate in their soul. In this video, he spews easily disprovable conspiracy theories about immigration in Europe, mainly because he subscribes to this idea that all native Europeans were once white, so he has to try to rationalize some reason why that has never been the case. Like I said earlier, YouTube left this type of content up on their site and allowed Varg to amass a quarter of a million followers before his channel was finally shut down for hate speech. I'm just wondering what his reaction to that was. Let's find out. Let's find out. So my new channel on YouTube was removed. Oh yeah, he tried to make multiple new channels when his first one on YouTube got suspended, where he was doing the exact same thing. I wonder why on earth videos like the ones we were watching would have gotten flagged for hate speech. We are reaching levels of delusion surpassing that of a guy who thinks that a girl wants to fuck him just because they made eye contact. The good thing in all of this is that uh, they exposed themselves as anti-European. No, you dipshit. I just listened to you say that civilization is humanity's way of destroying itself as justification for your belief that people who look different than you deserve to die. You don't get to cry censorship and harmless middle ground content now. You made your bed, now lie in it. We promote only degeneracy. What degeneracy might that be, Varg? I think that he's just mad that Skibbity Toilet's considered more valuable to the platform than his videos. They're actively helping the enemy destroy Europe, they all the enemy. It's as though he thinks that his videos are Europe, the entire continent. It's also interesting to me how he acts in this video, like a petulant child being incredibly dramatic. If it wasn't such an insidiously evil influence, I would find it extraordinarily funny. 
He compares his situation to 1984 because, of course, he does. He implies that Donald Trump personally had a hand in removing his channel from YouTube. And oh, look, he made multiple videos about his ban. I wonder if he's a sore loser. I'm a very sore loser. Ah, that clears things up. He tries to defend himself by saying that his videos got struck down because he said this. But in this attempted defense, he then openly admits to attacking Islam, immigration, and Judaism. This is because Varg is a moron. Then in his final video on BitChute that was about his YouTube ban, he talks about how he's tired of lie speakers being in his comments, so he's disabling all of the comments under all of his posts. Talk about free speech and censorship and standing your ground and finding the truth through debate, then disabling your comments so no one can disagree with you. Makes sense! And that brings us to the next piece of this puzzle. Kanye West. <laughs> Yeah, to really understand why Burzum and by extension Varg are getting relevant again, you've got to look no further than one of the current most notorious figures in popular culture. According to Wikipedia, in a recent appearance on Alex Jones' show Infowars, West praised Adolf Hitler, denied the Holocaust, and identified as a Nazi. According to a 2023 report published by the Anti-Defamation League, West's anti-Semitic rhetoric has caused several instances of hate speech vandalism, harassment, and violence across the United States. Here's my favorite example of said rhetoric. The thing about the red hat that drove me to a point of exhaustion, which was misdiagnosed by a, I'm not going to say what race, what people, uh, doctor, and what media went to. We know I can't say that. It was a Jewish doctor. Well done, Kanye. You really cracked under no pressure at all. They had to drag that one out of him. I can't say exactly what type of doctor treated me, but let's just say his name starts with J and ends with ooish doctor. That's my favorite example because it's really funny, but Kanye says a lot of way worse stuff than this, and people love to try and say that all of it is just a joke. And I want to highlight really quick how Kanye's own fan base engages with this. Hmm, he's pointing to a very real problem, even if he doesn't know how to articulate it in a digestible way. This group has a stranglehold on our government. Satire only really works when it's discernible that it's satire. And in the case of Kanye West, it's not even claimed to be satire. West has never said, I'm just joking around, despite having every opportunity to do so. He absolutely is not joking when he says stuff like this. And even if he were, people still seem to believe him. Recently, Kanye West wore Burzum merchandise and made an album cover which was heavily inspired by Burzum's album covers for his new album, Vultures One. While he eventually did change the cover, that damage had already been done, as many curious people, including young teenagers, fell down the rabbit hole of Nazi beliefs. Varg actually responded to Kanye's repping of his merch and ideology. And at first, he was not very enthusiastic about the idea, writing on Twitter, I know very little about about him or what he says or does, and I kind of have very little incentive to find out, it is better to spend time on something more fruitful. <laughs> However, he later changed his tune and decided that the publicity was a good thing, again taking to Twitter to say, I think it shows courage to publicly wear a Burzum shirt like he has done. You risk the wrath, including boycott, of an entire music industry completely under the control of a certain group. Does that group possibly start with J? and end with Uish Doctor. Attached to this tweet, Varg also couldn't resist trying to sell you his new book as well, which is honestly no surprise to me at this point. To all those who want me to speak ill of Kanye West, no, he is not stealing or ripping off anything I do. As I have written in my book about black metal, it is perfectly normal, natural, and fine to be inspired by and pick up ideas from other artists. Varg, I thought you're racist. What happened? Why aren't you racist anymore? This commenter really misses the good old days when Christian was racist. Let's see how he responds. What makes you think I'm not racist? Do you even understand why people are racist and what this actually means? Holy shit. I can't do this anymore, guys. I can feel my brain cells slowly rotting away. Sadly, because of the modern definitions up in dictionary, people tend to mostly mix up racism with hate. I legitimately couldn't make this stuff up, like if I tried to. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Also, it's cold in here. 
Fringe extremist groups like this often seek refuge on the vast internet. Unlike what many in their ranks would have you believe, it's actually quite easy to circumvent polite society, censorship, and the ever-present culture of cancellation, and just say anything you want. The marketplace of ideas is wide open, and thanks to the internet, you can distribute your ideas and ideology farther than you ever could at any other point in history ever. If one popular platform won't allow you to openly be a Nazi or gets annoyed at you for distributing videos of your naked children while you rant about fertility in young women and what men like in traditional women, then there's always another popular platform who will. YouTube is actually pretty fair when it comes to stuff like this. You can say almost anything. And the worst thing that could happen is they maybe don't run ads on your videos. I cover topics and make jokes that could be considered incredibly offensive or irreverent all of the time. Yet you'll notice my channel is still intact, as are my advertisements. In light of everything that we've discussed today, I thought that I was going to be very late to the party on this topic. I mean, this guy is a pretty easy target when it comes to anyone who likes to call out or make fun of idiocy. And this guy's name has been popping up everywhere lately. There are teenagers on TikTok making thirst traps and edits using interview footage from when the dude got sentenced for murder and those teenagers are asking him to have their children. It's pretty bad. But despite all of this, after searching and searching, I couldn't find even one person challenging this guy. Which got me thinking, why? Why would no commentary YouTuber cover this incredibly important character that definitely isn't just too niche or irrelevant to warrant a Attention. Then it hit me, like 23 fatal knife wounds. The other YouTubers are scared. I mean, think about it, right? This guy's a convicted murderer with hundreds of thousands of fans and extremist ideology. If someone somewhere were to make a video about this, it would be like painting a target on their back. I'm painting a target on my back. Oh, fuck. Hello, my friends. It's me, Daniel. If you're seeing this, it means that I was alive when I made this, and hopefully I'm still alive now. But I can't be sure, and I don't think I'll ever be sure again. So this is my message to the world. Just in case I do die in the coming weeks, as I'm sure I'll get crucified by Christian's followers. Or he'll just show up at my cabin in the woods one day, and they'll be like, Will Daniel Profeta die today? Let's find out. But while you're here on this planet, remember, if no one stands up to bullies and bigots and stupid people, you have to do it yourself. Don't ever stop being curious or learning. Otherwise, you might end up like Varg. Each like on this video equals one acorn that will fall from the sun onto Varg's head. I'll see you in hell.